I actually come from a background more of uh, renewable energy and uh, environmental law and environmental science. Um, so the whole like technology thing was like very, very, very unexpected. But I want to talk about like how, despite it not being like the obvious path to like someone who like cares most maybe deeply about the environment and creating sustainability in that sense, um, how someone now like such as myself now cares very deeply about like the importance and the progress and um, of the uh, open source community, uh, which like all of you are, are part of and like are, are kind of um, pretty deep ingrained and like have all this great perspective. And so I wanted to open it up um, to you all to to help to help me understand and maybe help each other to understand as well how the fact that um, you know maybe this open source isn't known in like the renewable energy world and the kind of sustainability world as something that is so powerful for creating the kind of social impact that I feel like all these broad stakeholders are really interested in creating. Um, so to back up for a second, um, uh, coming from it from like just a resource use standpoint, so like for me, environmental science, I feel like people who are coming at it from any discipline um, could probably tell a pretty similar story about how like their domain slash industry has been impacted by open source. Um, but I just don't get the sense that there's a, that awareness that like the progress of their of what they care about um, actually does like is very much impacted by this amazing global community that is very much represented at, at Open Source Bridge and um, So is, is there a story you have? A story? A, a story about how you yeah. You witnessed this, this lack of awareness? Um, so, I mean, I think the, la the lack of awareness is just, uh, I mean, it, it starts so far before knowing any like anything meaningful about open source itself. Um, so I happen to have, so about a year and a half ago, um, I had a roommate who worked at a company called Airbnb, and he was the first employee at this company. And it was basically the idea is like you pay to have other people work, stay in your house, sort of like a hotel, air bed and breakfast. And um, I, like, at some point, I went to my kitchen in Alamo Square in San Francisco, and it was a four bedroom flat, and we had two Airbnb rooms. Um, went to my kitchen, and there was this super like cool looking interesting woman and she turned out to be a futurist from Israel and we had this amazing conversation and like really like opened my eyes and like you know expanded my thinking around things uh, so I had this like really amazing transformative experience um, which I, I realized this is sort of the couch surfing experience as well but there was something about realizing that um, <clears throat> that something that connects people and expands our understanding of community um, is uh, ultimately what we need to save the world and that's sort of where the, the title of this co uh, conversation comes from is um, like how do we create global sustainability and um, at that moment sort of that like okay some some magic happened here when I met a free source from Israel in my kitchen and like we gave her a place to stay and like you know we could have cheaper rent in the meantime like all that's awesome but something happened um, I, I, I was reminded of this book I read um, in college for a class called Race, Gender, and the Environment. Um, and I read a book called Earth Democracy, and it talked about um, how we can create a sustainable world in, uh, in the context of uh, globalization, capitalism, and democracy. So like, given those three things, what do we need? <laughs> like, What should we make happen? What do we create? And uh, she, she, she mentions two things. So we need hyper-local economies, so in other words, helping people to transact locally and to produce things locally. So I think you have like the maker community and the DIY community um, and like the like other peer-to-peer -peer, uh, commerce, um, coupled with a global information infrastructure um, where culture can flow freely. So like in my kitchen, talking to the futurists from Israel, like the Airbnb guest, I was like, okay, finally, 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 because like, yeah, renewable energy stuff. Like, like I was like, 
like this is cool and it seems important, but like it's not really doing much um, for like all these things. And um, so after that, sort of just like started getting into Tekken um, and found that like a lot of it is predicated on open source. So I, I'd, I'd love to open. Yeah, that's okay. It's still. Oh, cool. Um, that yeah, I would love, yourself as well. like, given, like, that's sort of my story, and, um, uh, John, I hope, I hope that was, like, okay, the story sure. that yes, right. helps Very good. provide some context. Open it up to hear about, like, what do you guys think? Is this, like, why you're involved in open source? How do we, how do we, like, I would love to see everyone who cares about the environment, like, give a lot of crap about the open source and free culture community as well, because the two are so intimately tied. And there needs to be more awareness about that. Okay. Yeah. So, first of all, thanks. Like, I've been having a lot of thoughts based off what you're saying. But I've been more. So, when people talk about community, sometimes they don't always know what they're talking about because it's so broad. Yeah. And one of the things that what you're saying reminds me of is Jeremy Rifkin's Empathic Civilization um, yeah. ideas. Huh. So, in like a little sentence, it's the idea that we different structures societal or culture so that we can so that we can feel like we belong and have an easier time empathizing with other people such as for example a religion so that instead of yeah. being you know like I don't know you from a different country solidarity you're like, oh, you're yeah too, or you're Christian too or you're Christian too or you're totally Christian too. And yeah so and what was the name and the name of the Jeremy author? Rifkin's empathic civilization if you google that you'll get Jeremy that. Rifkin's yeah. empathic civilization yeah. so that's one thing that I'm thinking about as you're saying this but the other thing that I'm thinking about is the ways that um, the ways that what you're talking about parallels indirect um, and unexpected like results, not um, unanticipated like unintended, unintended consequences. Thank you. That was it. Unintended consequences. Externalities. What? It's no, an this exter- is slightly different than externalities. Ex- oh, okay. I don't know what externalities. Mean. That sounds. It, it's an economic term for things you're not responsible for that are. <laughs> okay, cool. So, like, couchsurfing is a good example of this because couchsurfing was, like, designed for this technique kind of one purpose and then and now it has, like, forums and groups and all this other stuff to help that purpose happen, but it connects people in multiple different ways. So that's one example of that. Yeah. And uh, as you talk about, like, globalization, you know, the globalization and capitalism and the way those are people are connected, yeah. one of the things that I've been curious about is sharing ideas for helping people, like, we go and talk and share resources right. on a hyper-local level. But yeah. we have an infrastructure for that called check-in services, like Portsmouth, Google Latitude, things like this, where people can yeah. be not so much trackable, but like find out where you are. Yeah. And so one of my ideas that I haven't had any time to like remember that I hopefully, maybe one of you can and make a business or make a lifestyle or whatever out of it, is adding like a Portsmouth like, inventory to Portsmouth profiles. Right. So like, for example, I always carry around um, like safer sex supplies and like food on the dental dams and like sex stickers and things like this. Yeah. And my hope is, so like if I check into a cafe at Foursquare, people in that cafe can be notified like, oh, hey, maybe it's in the building and has these things. You need to them. share. Wow. You need to share. To share. Yeah. To share. To share. Wow. And the hope of this is that it can help decentralize the last mile of distribution. So that instead of going to like uh, a Walmart or a Kmart or these big department stores, sure. people will begin to share what they have so, on their So person. you're trying to create a gifting economy. Um, and not so much gifting. Um, more just like resource pools because gifting economies require a default assumption of safety and they require abundant resources, which if you only have a small amount of things on you, yeah. you don't necessarily have. But you would give them to your friends. You can, I mean, yeah. If, if they ask. Or, or people who ask nicely enough, or first five people. And then, right. for example, like having things even be like intangible things. Like, I have a shoulder to cry on today because I had a good day, which is like, you know, and then. Getting a message like that when you check into uh, Starbucks probably be awesome. Interesting. Yeah, like in Starbucks and I'm having a bad day, and this person says that they should offer some support, so I'm going to go talk to them. Right. So, so this this infrastructure allows for efficient distribution of things, efficient efficient commerce, because right. if if I happen to be in the same store that you're in, and I need or the same park or on the same bus, right? right and I happen to need an aspirin. And you yeah. happen to have an aspirin. Exactly. Right? I function like this all the time. <laughs> so like, I want to make like, what if you could like also subscribe to like categories of things? Like I need medical supplies today, and then you just like subscribe to that, and then you check into a place, and anyone that has an item that falls into that category will be notified that you need that day. And yeah. you start like 
So, um, I, I was working with a, um, a startup that was uh, doing this kind of thing as far as skills of identifying who in the room has skills that you might need. Cool. Yeah, I, I think that, the, I mean, it, it's also, I mean, I think what you guys are talking about are more kind of social innovations that are like, like pretty explicitly around something that's like uh, the sort of like one-off knowledge of, of, of where someone is at any given time. Um, but I think the sort of like uh, like interestingly scalable notion that a lot, that is occurring right now is um, like a place where you can go and find someone who you don't know that you can actually um, like build into your, and change your lifestyle um, and, and go and um, you know obtain resources or, or, or knowledge that you wouldn't ordinarily have. There wouldn't be transparency around, um, and so basically, like gathering that data. Okay, um, so so in yeah. in, uh, in the past we've had these kinds of informal exchanges for a very short term for a very specific purpose. Right. Uh, and the classic example would probably be: Is there a doctor in the house? Yeah, right, which is a broadcast message of, hey, we need a doctor, does anyone happen to have one, because we need this. Uh, or on the bus, someone will say, oh, I'm like a quarter short, does anyone have a quarter? And people on the bus will say, yeah, here you can use a quarter. Um, but you're talking about something that's that's a longer term, because you want to change a lifestyle. Right. right? Um, and that this could be a, a self-improvement thing for a person to say, oh, maybe I, I just need you know, encouragement uh, to quit smoking, or maybe um, something I'm doing in my life where I, I don't know, every every Monday I go out and buy a pack of 3x5 index cards because during the week I write things down on 3x5 index cards and I have to go all the way across town to the only store I know of that sells 3x5 index cards yeah. but if, if Drew here across from me happens to have 3x5 index cards in his basement that he's got even like a bequest from his aunt totally right and, <laughs> and I can get 3x5 index cards from him yes. rather than go across town and get them yeah, so yeah, yeah exactly. Transparency is huge. So actually, I had I just had an idea, Brian, and, mm -hmm. um, about um, it might be interesting for for all of us to say uh, one thing uh, that um, you know we'd like to do more of in our lives that we just don't um, because you know maybe there are some like barriers that like we don't we don't own a car, so maybe we don't like drive to a certain place as much as that like to. we don't. Um, travel as much as like to because like like hotels are expensive or like you know stuff like that um, so like anything that's sort of aspirational like I'd like to um, like work out more I'd like to eat so and so I'd like to eat this kind of food more like whatever it is like that you love that makes you really happy that you just don't do every day because of practical barriers and, um, and we will remind everyone that this conversation is the safe for work <laughs> conversation oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no judgment. I mean, no judgment. Um, All of ours. Okay, what do you do? I may not do what you do. You probably don't. I I probably don't. Cool. Um, so yeah, if you wouldn't all mind sharing that, I think that would be like an interesting place because I bet you that all of those things are traced back to like somehow the internet can make that easier and interesting part is that the, the software that the open source community creating is the thing that's enabling <coughs> those new platforms to exist but and, and so basically I feel like op the open source community is like making it possible for all of our dreams to come true which isn't but then we get, need to get all of you to participate in that community and the technology we're creating and not just the culture right totally which is why I'm glad we're having this conversation because that's what I want to do um, so in San Francisco, I've been working with a few different people on putting together a collaborative consumption co-working space, um, slash like sharing the economy, slash like sort of sustainable like, other kind of clean tech stuff. Um, and uh, one like huge important facet was like to understand how exactly open source software fits into the whole conversation. Um, and I feel like, like well, the people who are working on these like proprietary platform like startups. Um, like, you know, are, are going to be using open source software and, like, would probably love to, like, be a, be a member of, of this community, even if they're not now. And, and I think there there is currently, like, quite a lot of overlap because 
engineers, how can you not, how can you be an engineer and not a member, a contributing member of the open source community? I mean, I feel like there is a lot of overlap. Um, uh, so yeah, if, if you guys want to like share quickly like things that you would love to do more of, I would just be curious. So mine was hiking. So that's why I'm creating a hiking a platform for hiking. Because I want to make, I want to go hiking more and I want to make it easier and more actionable. Okay, well, I have a very practical need. I, I need, I need zip cars that can be um, staged for me in a particular place so I can go and get them and then drive around and then bring them back to a different place. Not not the point of art. Um, I need to be more of a doer than a talker under a lot of circumstances and a lot of my energies and motivations are associated with, with getting other people who are also like-minded interested. So someone who works by themselves, for example, often deviates, goes off and does other types of things. So one of the things I've been working on recently is to establish a new office space and then try to create some type of a uh, a working system that encourages people to move around and hop around to, say, different companies, mine included. And this is supposed to be all free. And one of the things with this is that um, it'll help me stay motivated and focused on, on problems such as yeah. the open source, uh, totally. the sharing system. So this is very much in line with that. So I'm trying to solve my problems. <laughs> and um, so, so accountability, it's social a context for social accountability. Yeah. That motivates you. Okay, awesome. Right. Uh, I want to be a better musician by playing more myself, playing more with people. Love it. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Love that one. <laughs> because you keep thinking about it tonight. But I will be more. Stop. <coughs> I know, I know. Well, um, actually, um, so my sort of a two-parter. I would like to travel more, but the kind of travel that I enjoy doing is something that is not well supported by open source right now. Because I actually like going to places before they've been discovered by other people, pretty much. Like, I don't want to go to the same places everybody else you're not. You're not alone there. I know, but the problem is, that's a contradiction. That's inherently contradictory. How would you let people know about places that haven't been discovered yet? That statement itself is right. Wrong. Like, how would you find them? How would? Yeah. So how can how can a, could a community help people find that and be inclusive and open source? You know, right. all those things. Is this actually a remote sensing discussion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something I don't know. You know, it's just like there's a lot of things that you think about. I mean, I, I actually was involved in the project for a couple of years when we were trying to do targeted travel. In other words, we try to figure out more about the specific person so they could point that person at places that they would enjoy. Not necessarily, most travel sites tend to be lowest common denominator. So you end up with, where are the restaurants here? Well, here's all the McDonald's. You know, sort of thing. Um, you know how do you make a site that is going for you? Experiences, but eventually gave up on that. So, uh, yeah. It's a tough problem. I don't yeah, know. yeah. Viable, which is a startup I worked with last year, is, is a marketplace for unique experiences. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have issues yeah, with like that, them, that approach. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I think having a more narrow vertical is actually like designing a product that's for a, a more specific um, activity or like thing to. And like, exp like experience is too broad. Like you need like what type of experience? But well, and there are some sites that do that. I mean, like, so there's so many different sites that will tell you about good restaurants, right? Yeah. But like, what you end up with is because there's so many of them. Yeah. They become focal. So like, I would, I tend to only go to Urban Spoon because it's populated by a lot of foodies. Right? Totally. So. Yeah, urban you know, they're good. the people who are looking for right. unusual And it's all about to community curation, too. I mean, right. like, curating your community and, like, what your early adopt who your early adopters are. Like, it's meaningful because it, it creates a culture. Uh, and, and these online communities have cultures. And, um... Uh, so there's a term for this. It's called mass customization. Yeah. Where you can fit experiences to individual games, even though you're mass you know, Ike did it with shoes and people that well. Cool. You can actually custom design. Your right, own. it's very niche, it's very so specific. So how do you? We don't seem to be doing a good job of that yet. Uh, We're going to get better, and and oh, startup yeah, land is a big part of that, yeah. like for for all of its like pros and cons. Um, but that's like why I think the 
the and, and the open source community, I, I think it seems like like it is creating tools for a lot of these companies. And so there is like a very important relationship there between the open source community and a lot of these startups or like companies. I mean, like that's what obviously there's like the sponsors of this conference, for example, like are like showing, demonstrating that relationship. And then like people here work at these companies and like, I don't know. Yeah, but I don't see us making very good progress. Facebook is the height of yeah. Well. Right. So, in terms of like explicitly open source, I mean, it's open. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's an interesting idea. Um, so, uh, so I am actually going to have to take off soon, but um, I hope that you will continue the sort of um, uh, conversation about like something that's aspirational and awesome in your life, and maybe like how that will eventually be met by some amazing online product that you can meet amazing people to like seriously make whatever you want to do in life doable and make that easier and just like bringing that back that there will probably be some really critical open source software involved in creating that and that we should really try and couple the idea of um, kind of this new economy with the progress and the importance of the open source community and um, please let me know, and I'll watch the video. So after this is like, I'd like to eat more foods that are just grown from the ground. And so I have this idea for another app that like you can take a photo of a plant leaf, and then it sends you back whether or not that's edible. And oh. also because it can geolocate you, more yeah. plants are edible yeah. in your area. My friend Scott has a has a startup called iNaturalist that's basically doing that. It turns, really? Yeah, dude. iNaturalist. Um. So, but uh. But, uh, I think I if you guys want to talk about like how each of you are involved in your like groups of friends who, who do open source stuff, um, it would just be really awesome to, to hear your ideas about how the open source community can um, like be more directly linked into projects that are addressing needs that you really care about. Like maybe that's the efficiency, right? Is like, hey, everyone who wants to like change the way we eat and like make couch surfing for meals, for example. Like, let's all like get everyone in the same room who like cares about solving this problem, and like maybe they don't want to like quit their job and like work for that company, but you know maybe there is like they can like dedicate their open source volunteer time to something that more directly impacts that. So like creating that kind of efficiency in the open source community as it relates to like your individual broad personal goals in life. Um, so I'm super interested in like how I can help to, like bring together communities so like people who want to make more hiking happen because that helps people become aware and value the environment so like maybe there's engineers who like love that idea and they could like help things that like are more relevant to the sort of technical problems that uh, a startup like the hikery would would have um, so like that kind of thing so um, thank you guys and sorry I have to run you guys are lovely I don't think I'm even going to have time to finish my donut. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to Bellingham. What was the name of that thing again? I'm sorry. iNaturalist? Okay. Yeah, and if you guys are ever in San Francisco, like, let me know. I live in San Francisco. Say hello to the Bellingham. I will. <laughs> Hamsters? Bellingham. Bellingham. The people from Bellingham are Bellingham. <laughs> So, are you putting this in communion or? I don't know. Yeah, everybody's just going to walk over to the sex talk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they usually had those at, at the very last. So we're going to grab everything and go, I like that for a Open source. I thought traditionally they were just the very last thing. So um, the thing, the thing I'm, I'm, I've been kind of interested in is some of the, just the concept of some of the open source art or just even from radios to anything else. Because radios are always cool to have when you're in problems. 
for anything. It's like I can if you find something where communication gets yeah. knocked okay. out yeah, in the U.S. or abroad, and the first thing they look is for amateur radio operators because when you knock out cell towers and cut phone lines, people need to talk to each other. It's like 